Hi, I'm Pat Patterson, and in this short video, I'm going to show you the Streamsets Data Collector Hive Drift solution. So what I've got here is basically the end result of uh, working through the uh, Hive Data Solution tutorial. So I've got Streamsets Data Collector, and it's actually running on uh, the Cloudera distribution of Hadoop on the Quick Start VM. So um, I've got uh, Hive is running, that's the uh, some of the sample data. And um, what I've got is this pipeline. So this is a very, very simple pipeline, just enough to really demonstrate the Hive drift solution. In reality, you could have any number of stages in here, um, performing lookups, doing uh, expression evaluation, you could be sending data to destinations other than Hive, but this is really um, focusing in on this Hive Drift solution. So what I have here is a JDBC consumer, so reading a relational database, and I'm actually reading uh, MySQL. I'm reading this shipping events table, and I'm using event ID as my offset, so I'm going to be reading in new shipping events as they um, as they appear in that table. So pretty standard configuration down here. One thing to note when you're using Hive Drift Solution is ensure that uh, Create JDBC Namespace Headers is turned on because what this does is um, it adds attributes to each record uh, describing the database. So things like the table name, uh, the field types and uh, so on. So um, what we have over in MySQL is this shipping events table. So very simple, just four columns. And um, we've already got some data in it. So I can go over to stream sets and preview uh, what's going to happen. So uh, let's hit, hit the preview button here. And this will give us an idea of uh, how this solution is actually working. So here's my data coming in from uh, the JDBC consumer. So uh, that's that first record there. And if I look down, I can see this record header. And what I should see is I see all of this JDBC uh, type information. So uh, I can see the table name. I can see JDBC type 4 um, for the event ID, which is presumably an integer, and, uh, and so on, 12 for the event type. Uh, which will be a string and so on. And this, this helps the uh, Hive metadata processor uh, create the right um, uh, metadata records to describe the structure of the incoming data. So Hive metadata processor doesn't uh, alter the data in any way. That's just, uh, that's just passed through. But uh, what it does do is it passes it through to this Hadoop file system destination. So that's going to write the uh, data files into Hadoop that, that Hive is going to be able to read. And this is the crucial bit. It also writes this metadata to the Hive Metastore destination. So this is going to interact with the Hive Metastore. And it's actually going to, uh, in the first instance, create a table. Because if we look over um, in Hive, this is actually in Parler. Uh, giving me a sort of interactive shell working with Hive. Um, the shipping events table is not there yet. So uh, if we look back, we can see that uh, it's going. it's got information on the columns. So everything that uh, is needed to create this table in Hive is present in this uh, metadata record that's created by the Hive metadata processor and then uh, consumed by the Hive Metastore destination, which writes it into Hive. OK, so that's enough talking. Let's uh, make some data flow. So uh, let's see, I've got three records there. So if we just uh, start up the pipeline, what we should see is uh, these three records were read in, in the input, and four have been output. And if we click on the metadata uh, processor, we can see that um, Three data records were sent to output one up to the uh, Hadoop file system destination. As, as we expected, as we saw in the preview, uh, one is sent to output two for that Hive Metastore. So uh, let's use Hue and have a quick look at Hive. We can just uh, refresh it there. So we can see 
the shipping events uh, table there. And if we look over in uh, Impala, what we'll find is that we have to actually um, invalidate metadata to be able to uh, see the shipping events table. Um, we're not notify. Uh, Impala doesn't know that the Hive uh, uh, schema has changed without us telling it. But with that, we can then do a describe and see that um, StreamSets Data Collector uh, has created a table. So it kind of mirrors the structure of the table in uh, MySQL. And we can uh, do a select. And we, see, we can see the data flowing. And um, Let's let's pump some more data through. So this is the usual case. You know, you would have um, data starting to flow, that hive table being created, and let's see um, step two dot sql. So this is just going to create a few more records. Um, so we've now got six records in the database, and if we just click in the background here, see that tick up to uh, six processed. And um, so we've, we've sent another three to the Hadoop file system, nothing else to the Metastore because uh, there's been no change in the schema. And over here, um, we do have to say refresh. Uh, I think it's refresh table shipping events because we've added new um, HDFS files. Oop. Let's get the right syntax here. And um, we should be able to. We can see, though, there's now six records there. OK, the uh, stream sets is writing HDFS files. And again, we have to give Impala a little bit of help because um, it, uh, it needs to know to refresh its cache because those files have kind of changed out from underneath it. OK, so we could pump more and more data through this. It would all be very happy. Uh, we could run queries in Hive or Impala. Um, but let's see what happens when there's data drift, when the schema changes. So let's read in another file, another SQL file. So uh, what this is going to do, it's going to alter my table. And if I have a look at it now, you can see that I've added latitude and longitude fields to it. So these are shipping events. You know, I ship some goods, I, uh, they've arrived at their destination, and I've now got the capability to record uh, the location of those events. So I've added latitude and longitude, and in fact, added uh, three more records to the, uh, to the table with those values. And as I was talking, um, you can see that the number of input records has gone up to nine, so those three new records have been read in. And look, the output records um, uh, went up to 11 so that if we, we can kind of get the uh, information here, the Hive metadata processor sent three more to the Hadoop file system and an extra one to the Hive Metastore. So again, if we go over here and say, let's invalidate the uh, metadata because we just made a schema change and uh, let that happen. And then if we look at the shipping events, then what we should see is essentially a mirror of the MySQL table. So there we've got the, those three new records that came through with their latitude and longitude. You know, the table was, was automatically um, uh, altered to have latitude and longitude columns, and the existing data uh, just shows up with null in those fields. So there you have it. The stream sets, data collector, hive drift solution reacting to changes in the structure of incoming records and altering um, a table in the Hive Metastore. Thanks for watching.